Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Um, thum, 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 thum. Uh, pass me the cream, darling. Here you are, here you are, here you are. You're very cheerful this morning, Mrs. Norton. Any objections, Mrs. Brown? Not a one. I woke up cheerful. For no reason at all. What do you mean, for no reason at all? There are plenty of reasons. No, Gertrude. Now that you mention it, that is a, rather a relief. Mm. Something nice and private about eating breakfast without a maid around, isn't there? It is cozy. That's not the half of it. Oh, you. I know why you like it. You like it because you don't dare tell Gertrude you won't eat her prunes and cereal. When it's only me, you don't eat. Well, I'm eating, I'm eating. Orange juice, toast, and coffee. What kind of breakfast is that for a farmer? I'm not a farmer. I'm an architect. Very convenient. When you want to be a farmer, you're a farmer. When you don't want to eat, you're an architect. Go on. Starve yourself for all I care. Only Gertrude will be here any minute. Then watch out. <laughs> I shall flee like a rabbit. Like a coward. You too. You're worse than children. <laughs> What's the matter with children, grandmother? Nothing. When they're children. How about another piece of toast, darling? Mm, all right. Just one. Mm. Mother, flip the jigger on the toaster, would you please? Hey, what's the matter with me flipping the jigger? The toaster's nearer to me. You are not to overexert yourself. Making toast is not exerting. Well, it's a symbol. David's right. I shall make the toast. Honestly. I was a mere simple woman... Not a future mother. Only four weeks of future left. Thank goodness. I shall ignore the interruptions. As I said, when I was a mere simple woman, I was perfectly able to make the toast just to my husband's taste. Are you trying to tell me I'm usurping your wifely rights? I am. Good. That's exactly what I'm here for. Huh. And the more you usurp these next few weeks, mother, the happier I'll be. Pass the zerp, will you? Now, yes. darling, we're opening up a brand new week, so... Tell me, how are you going to spend it? I'm not going to spend it. I'm going to waste it. Claudia hates to spend anything, David. No, I just like to get my money's worth out of my time. If I don't, it's wasting it. Then how do you plan to waste it, darling? Doing nothing. I'm perfectly resigned, willing, and cheerful to spend the next four weeks sitting up here on the farm like a log. Like a bump. Like a... Anything that just sits and sits and sits and sits. My, that's good news, David. I am going to be a vegetable, completely and utterly a vegetable, if that's what you want me to be. Oh, I'm very fond of vegetables. Except beets and spinach and eggplant and squash yeah, be, and... Be, be like a bean, darling. A bean? You know my passion for beans. I bean a bean for weeks. <laughs> and it's bean very becoming. Oh. You're looking fine. Thank you. Same to you, Mama. How about another cup of coffee, David? No, thanks. Mine's still warm. Oh, you're lucky going into New York like a man every morning. Well, I happen to be a man. Just your luck, so don't brag. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Gertrude. Gertrude. You managed to get Gertrude. breakfast without Gertrude? We managed, but just. Mm, sorry, couldn't make it. I was planning buckwheat cakes. Oh, it's perfectly all right, Gertrude, really. I make fine buckwheat cakes, but my late husband's sister come in on the train, and I felt I had to be there at the station to call out welcome. I'd have felt exactly the same way to Gertrude. I met the mail woman at the post office, so I brought along your mail. Oh, marvelous mail at breakfast, just like New York. Not much of it. A couple of letters, some bills, and a seed catalog. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Well, guess I'll be going. A lot to be done. No time for prattling, anyway. I sure like to get my hands on cleaning up with Stella. Marvelous, marvelous woman, Gertrude. Has her faults, but a marvelous woman. Who's the mail from, Claudia? I, I'm just looking at it. Oh, here's a letter for you, David. From the uh, hardware store. Hmm. An ad. And one from Henpeck Farms. Another ad. What's that letter there, under the seed catalog? Where? Here, right there. Oh, yes, I didn't notice it. <laughs> Probably just another ad for a change. No, it's a... It's for me. Oh, congratulations. It's from... Well, for heaven's sakes, I wonder what it's about. I, 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 I just can't believe it's for me. Such, such an event for the poor child to get a letter. Touching, isn't it, David? Yes, tears start to my eyes. I can't imagine what it's about. You said that already. Come I on, did. Claudia, open it. You get me nervous just sitting there looking at I'm it. I'm opening it. Give me half a chance. I'll bet it's an ad. Well, 
Well, I... It's not an ad, Dave. It's a bill for something she bought and forgot. Dear Miss Brown, Well, I couldn't be more surprised. And she forgot how expensive it was, too. Mm. She's so quiet, Mother. Must be fascinating. It is. It's the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. What has happened to you? Well, I... I, I... It's just, um... A letter from an old admirer? Well, in a way, yes. It's the last thing on earth I expected to get in the mail. A letter? Nothing unusual about getting a letter in the mail. Now, shh, 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 both of you. I want to read it again. My, what a dreamy look in your eyes, darling. And pink spots on your cheeks. David. What, darling? Would it be absolutely terrible of me to go into, uh, I mean... Go on, what... go on, say it. Well, nothing much. What's tomorrow, David? Mm, tomorrow. Tuesday. I know it's Tuesday. What's the date? May 25th. Today is the 24th. 24th. Mama, what are you doing tomorrow? I got an appointment with my knitting needles and the Adirondack chair under the apple tree at 9 a.m. sharp. Why? No reason. I just thought if you were going to be here all day, you could take care of Gertrude and Bluff and Shakespeare, that's all. Why should I be the zookeeper? Where are you going to be? Oh, no, 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 no place special, but I... I thought I'd run down to New York for the day. Say that again. You don't have to look like that, both of you. New York is not the moon. My dear young carrots and peas, just a few minutes ago you announced that you were utterly resigned to be utterly a vegetable on the farm. Oh, that was utterly a few minutes ago, old turnip. That was before... Before the famous letter that shook the world. If you don't tell me what's in that letter, I'll wring your neck. Mm, Mother, mother, mother. I draw the line at using force. Now, it isn't really anything important. It's just that I feel I want to go to New York. Is that so awful? You're not making sense. It's not that I want to have a secret from you, darling. It's just that I... I don't want to tell you. That's all. Well, why did you say so in the first place? In that case... Darling, you're angry. Angry? Me? Ridiculous. You promise? I don't have to promise. Only women are so nosy that they can't bear not knowing what's in a... Another person's private mail. Oh, it must be wonderful to be a man and have no petty vices. It is wonderful. <laughs> so wonderful that I'm going to put on my hat and coat and go to New York and leave you to all your little plots and make-believe letters. David, is it all right about tomorrow? What about it? What have we been talking about going to New York? Of Darling, course. if you want to go, New York would love to have you. Oh, thank you. And on its behalf, I extend to you an invitation. And I accept. I must admit, this is all above my head. How would you like to drive me to the station? I'll be ready when you are. Well, now, Claudia, confess. Confess what? Enough's enough. I'm your mother. Maybe you're right. Mothers are different. Maybe that's why I don't want to tell David. Tell him what? Claudia, are you feeling all right? Feeling marvelous. Never felt better. If you're not, if you're going into New York to see the doctor, if you're... Using a silly letter as an excuse, I'll... I wouldn't do that, Mama. That's too serious to pretend about. All right. I'll take your word for it. You don't have to tell me any more. But I have every intention of telling you, Mama. I just don't want to tell David. I mean, not yet. Mama, this letter was from Jim Varney. Jim Varney? Never heard of him. He's a Broadway theatrical producer. What on earth is he doing writing to you? That is just the point. He's writing to me because he's opening a summer theater in Eastbrook this summer, and he wants to know if I'd be interested in acting with his company. He must be mad. Speaks my one and only loving parent. But, Claudia, you're not an actress. Well, Jim Varney doesn't seem to agree with you. He saw me in a play at dramatic school, he says, and that's why he wants to see me. I think it's because you're convenient. You'll be a neighbor of his theater. So will you be. He didn't ask you. But why on earth didn't you tell David? Well, because nothing's settled, and I I thought maybe David would be hurt a little. Hurt? Because his wife's a potential Sarah Bernhardt? Well, maybe he'd think I wasn't satisfied with just living up here on the farm and being a mother. Then if the job doesn't come through, he'd have been hurt for nothing. Every now and then you show a little sense. And I am satisfied, Mom, only... Well, this is a chance to... To act. And I love it, Mama. I don't know how the theater's gotten on without you. Oh, you. Then it's settled. I'll go into New York tomorrow and see Mr. Varney. May I at least warn you that your Mr. Varney is going to be a bit surprised when he sees you. Why? He says to come. He says for you to come. 
He doesn't expect a whole family. A what? I don't think he expects to see you looking, well, so very much like a mother. Well, I, 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 I don't look so much like a mother. Besides, I'm not going to look like this forever. It's always a little difficult to make a strange man realize that. You forget that Mr. Varney saw me before I was having a baby. Mama, you know, I don't think you want me to go and see him tomorrow. I don't want you to be disappointed. Oh, I won't be. Let's see now. I've got a navy blue suit that makes me look positively sylph-like. Uh, I'd like to see the sylphs you have in mind. You will. Mama, you know it's funny. Just now at breakfast, I was perfectly contented. Beautiful day. You here. David, sweet and darling. Everything perfect. Now all I can think of is being an actress again. I could kick myself. Wait. When David found, finds out what this big secret's about, he'll probably save you the trouble. Shh, here he is. Don't you tell him or I'll never forgive you. Well, are you all ready to go to the station? I'm all ready and willing, darling. What about you, Mother? No, thank you. My knitting's waiting. Baby blankets take such a long time. You know, Mother, you have an extraordinary daughter. That's no news to me, David. She really had me fooled. I had you fooled? How? Huh? Well, you fooled me into thinking you really received an important letter. It wasn't until I got out from under the spell of your performance that I realized how I'd been taken in. But David, it's true. I'm going to New York tomorrow. Of course you are, if you want to. You don't have to pretend about a letter. Such a fuss about nothing. But, David, I'm not pretending. You see, Mother, your daughter is really quite a little actress. Mama, did you hear him? David, say that again, please. Yes, sir. You certainly had me fooled. I said... You're really quite a little actress. Oh, darling, that is the most beautiful thing you ever said to me. And for once, I certainly hope you're right. When you run into a friend at the market these days, why not step over to the familiar red cooler and invite her to pause and refresh? Over a friendly Coca-Cola, you can relax and visit. You'll find Coke coolers in more and more food stores now, as well as in service stations and department stores. They certainly make pleasant spots to enjoy a refreshing interlude. What do you think of my daughter, Mr. King? Claudia? Oh, I think she's wonderful. I think she's mad. She really seems convinced that she's going to get that summer theater job. Maybe she will. Maybe she won't. I hope she won't be too disappointed if she doesn't. Well, we don't have long to wait till we find out. Just till tomorrow. By hook or by crook, she's going to get herself into New York tomorrow. That's much I'm sure of. Without telling David? That's her intention. Of course, I don't think Claudia can keep a secret from David. <laughs> how many women can? I wish it were tomorrow and I knew how this were all going to turn out. I'm a little bit worried. Well, I don't blame you, but tomorrow will come very quickly. See you then, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.